You might be familiar with gods and goddesses that stood for multiple things. But have you heard of a goddess that stood for love and sex and war simultaneously? All is fair in love and war, indeed. Hello, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we'll be talking about Ishtar, the Mesopotamian goddess of love, sex, and war. She was one of the most worshipped gods of the Mesopotamian cultures. She was a dualistic divinity from the Babylonian pantheon with a variety of roles. She defied categorization, and her impact went beyond the first civilization of humanity. The first civilizations in human history originated in Mesopotamia, which is why it has the nickname Cradle of Civilization. Between the Tigris and Euphrates River, cultures including the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians flourished from around 3200 BCE until the collapse of the Persian Empire in 331 BCE. The Mesopotamians were polytheistic societies, as were the majority of ancient civilizations, and they worshipped a wide variety of gods who ruled every element of their existence. Ishtar, the goddess of sex, love, and battle, was one of Mesopotamia's most intricate and significant gods. The goddess of love was not known as Ishtar in the earliest Mesopotamian era. Instead, she was revered as Inanna by the Sumerians and eventually went by the names Ishtar among the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. It's interesting to note that some academics think Inanna and Ishtar were once two different goddesses who eventually fused into one. It is known with relative certainty that Ishtar had a twin brother, known initially as Utu among the Sumerians, and later renamed Shamash. The Mesopotamian underworld, Kur, was controlled by Ereshkigal, an elder sister of the goddess of love. The identities of Ishtar's parents are unknown, though. According to some sources, Ishtar was the child of Ningal, the reed goddess, and Nana, the moon deity. Dumuzi, also known as Tammuz, revered as the shepherd deity, was her husband. Ishtar was revered for her role as the goddess of lust, fertility, and political power. She was also revered as the goddess of both love and war. Ishtar's impact, however, went well beyond her traditional duties. She was revered as the goddess of thunderstorms, food preservation, and food facilities like granaries. In Mesopotamian civilization, Ishtar was regarded as a judge alongside her brother. Ishtar's two primary emblems were the lion and an 8 or 16 pointed star. The goddess was also associated with the planet Venus, and because Venus can be seen in the morning and near the evening, she was sometimes referred to as the goddess of the morning and the evening star. One of the most well-known myths featuring the goddess Ishtar is centered around the death of her husband, Demuzi. It's noteworthy that there were two accounts for Demuzi's death. In these writings, Ishtar, also known as Inanna, laments the death of the shepherd deity in one version when robbers murder the shepherd god. In another story, Ishtar is slain by her sister, Ereshkigal, after entering the underworld. Ishtar, however, arranges her resurrection by sacrificing Demuzi in her place so that she might return to the land of the living. Another prominent Mesopotamian text where the goddess Ishtar appears is the Epic of Gilgamesh, where the goddess of love takes an interest in Gilgamesh and offers to become his wife. Gilgamesh, however, rejects Ishtar's approach and insults the goddess by saying that she has a history of sending her lovers to terrible deaths. In Kiddu, Gilgamesh's best friend died due to the goddess's anger over the king's rejection, which led her to send the bull of heaven to slay Gilgamesh. Ishtar is a multifaceted divinity who was dualistic and occasionally contradictory in Mesopotamian texts. Ishtar, the goddess of sex, fertility, and war, ruled over the competing forces of life and death. According to Mesopotamian writings, she delighted in waging war just as much as she did in making love. She represented a natural phenomena that would have posed a threat to the crops, that the Mesopotamians relied as their primary source of nourishment, as the goddess of thunderstorms in Mesopotamia. Despite this, the Mesopotamians continued to associate Ishtar with food preservation and storage facilities. She was greatly revered in Mesopotamian society as a dispenser of justice and is sometimes shown as a caring lover who weeps over the passing of her husband. Other stories, however, painted her in a very different light. They portrayed her as a selfish divinity who ultimately annihilated all her lovers and frequently acted in ways that seemed at odds with her duty as a heavenly guardian of justice. For instance, 
she stole supernatural abilities from other Mesopotamian gods, sent the bull of heaven to murder Gilgamesh for refusing to wed him, and made sure her lover, Dumuzi, was imprisoned in the underworld so she could escape. These contradictory depictions of the goddess Ishtar seem to be part of who she is as a whole, depicting her as a multifaceted Mesopotamian deity who played many different roles. Ishtar's persona differences also don't seem to have diminished her significance as a Mesopotamian divinity. However, many academics contend that Ishtar's dualistic character may have added to her prominence. The goddess was able to occupy a liminal or in-between position due to the inconsistencies in her job and personality. Because of this, her sphere of heavenly power might encompass elements of Mesopotamian life that occasionally stood in conflict with one another. She was also revered as a goddess of the passage between life and death due to her propensity to resurrect from the afterlife, which is more evidence. Ishtar is not just one of the most intricate Mesopotamian deities, but also one of the most well-known. Mesopotamian tales frequently refer to her as a god with all the vast divine powers and deserving of her throne. She is sometimes described as a fearsome goddess who rode with battle on seven enormous hounds, or maybe lions in who, when she was on the warpath, even the most powerful Mesopotamian deities dreaded. In the book Inanna and Ebi, the goddess shows off her strength by flattening an entire mountain. Several stories also depict Ishtar as politically astute and skilled at utilizing her intelligence to win allies or outwit opponents in addition to her violence. She persuaded An, the head of the Mesopotamian pantheon, to grant her the Bowl of Heaven in the Gilgamesh epic so she can exact revenge on Gilgamesh for insulting her. Ishtar, the goddess of love, persuaded the Mesopotamian god of knowledge, Ea, to assist her in creating an escape strategy after being imprisoned in the underworld for defying Ereshkigal. After all this, it is not unexpected that the goddess could transcend socio-political borders in Mesopotamian culture and be revered by practically all of the region's civilizations. She was frequently referred to as the Queen of Heaven. And in towns like Ur and Nineveh in Mesopotamia, she had several temples. In the Sumerian city of Uruk, Iana was one of Ishtar's most significant temples. Sargon of Akkad, a well-known Mesopotamian monarch, was a staunch admirer of Ishtar and helped introduce her worship to regions of Mesopotamia that had not previously honored the goddess of love. The priestess, Enedwana, the oldest known author to be specifically recognized, is said to have penned one of the hymns still in existence dedicated to Ishtar. Enheduanna is also thought to be the daughter of Sargon. The Assyrians would regard Ishtar with such awe that they would elevate her to the position of the supreme deity in their pantheon, surpassing even their own supreme Ashur. She had such a profound impact on Babylonian culture that King Nebuchadnezzar II gave her the honor of receiving the city's main entrance. Beyond love and war, she also played supporting roles that influenced several essential aspects of Mesopotamian civilization. Kings like Hammurabi would summon the goddess Ishtar as a divine administrator of justice to punish offenders and defend the law. Ishtar wielded considerable political influence because of her dominance over battle and justice. As a result, monarchs allied themselves with Ishtar to support the legitimacy of their regal reign. Ishtar's status as a liminal deity gave her unique control over the cultural roles and limits of Mesopotamian civilizations and her political significance. She empowered her devotees to challenge or even reinvent societal norms, particularly those about gender roles, in line with her capacity to transcend categories. For example, gala or male priests of Ishtar were permitted to indulge in homosexual behavior and occasionally took on non-binary gender roles and dressed as women. Ishtar was even crucial to Mesopotamian society's primary food source, agriculture, Farmers prayed to Ishtar, the goddess of thunderstorms and guardian of warehouses, for the rain that helped irrigate their crops and pleaded with her for a plentiful harvest. The early civilizations relied on her for everything, from the political and social structure to their food supply and capacity for reproduction. The first civilization in human history owe their existence to her, and she was rewarded by being raised to the highest ranks of their pantheon and adored for over 3,000 years.